if you want to have a viable modern stoicism, then you can't ignore what we know about psychology. You can't mm. ignore that we suffer loss and the more mm. intimate the attachments, a child, a husband, and the, and the more untimely the deaths, mm. the more we're going to suffer. That's the way empathy is built. Mm. Um, and what do you mean by not- untimely? Do you mean, do you mean as in uh, death is becoming a little bit less common now or like less? No, no, obs- no, untimely in the sense that um, you lose a child in their prime as a okay. parent. Yeah. You oh, okay. Child- Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I get it now. Yeah. Um, in a tragic loss, parents of, of service members mm. who may be, you know, kind of getting used to it, but still not, or it's a terribly disfiguring death in your up close and intimate, mm. a fire who watches people f- burn to death mm. or tried to save someone and failed to look underneath uh, a-, a bed though he went into the bedroom three times and failed yeah. to look under the bed to find a child. Okay? Mm. So those are very intimate and they're ga- and they're gr- and they can be ghoulish. Mm. Um, but, so we know that the way the brain imprints that stuff is not uh, going to make it go away easily. Mm. It's, it's very vivid. Um, it's probably very visually imprinted and it may be in a part of the brain that stores differently than in the discursive, pre-rehearsal, tell yourself that this happens to other mortals way that, 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 the, that the Stoics teach. Mm. So we want to be able to update that a little bit. And we, mm. you know, and the, the Stoics were themselves updating it. Seneca has consolations to Marcia, who loses family members. We're not quite sure who, but mm. probably a child. And um, he says you should grieve for a while. Mm. He, as in many rich, many traditions, a certain amount of grieving and distress makes sense. So he's not getting rid of that. He's trying to put some boundaries on it so that it doesn't become a protracted dysfunctional syndrome. Mm. That yeah. makes good sense. That's healthy resilience to my mind. And so yeah. if we can find more notions within Stoicism that don't make them out to be loonies, but rather mm. to be humans, the better we are. The mm. cynics may borrow a lot, um, or at least, you know, they're, the cynics are a part of the transmission route from Socrates to them. Um, you know, have a very controversial figure at their head and that's Diogenes of Sinope mm. he's he's a bit of a crazy um <laughs> meaning you know he's fun he's he's like a stand-up comic almost he's yeah. hysterical if you believe the uh the reports and um you know he wants to get a good British phrase get the mickey out of you get you know get a rise out of you mm. by you know in your face you say you know you say Money's a good thing. I say you should deface it and mm-hmm. take away coinage. You say, um, 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 you know, that I, you're looking for, a, he's a slave at some point, sold as a slave. You're looking for a master. I say, buy a master, meaning I'm a master of myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he inverts a lot of meanings in order to turn things upside down a bit. Mm. And very influenced by Socrates, who had a very, very, who preached a simple life and could withstand all sorts of hardship and cold and absent lack of sleep. So mm. they they do a lot of that, especially Epictetus, a lot of hyperbole about the endurance and strength of human beings to withstand all sorts of deprivations. But you know, there's there's lots of strains in this complicated school, and one of them, a very important voice, I think, is the most important voice. I think often is Seneca's, and mm. he's he's walk he's trying to walk the walk in a horrible <laughs> empire yeah. with Nero as his boss. 